I'm going to turn this over to Ron so he can introduce our speaker. You ready for that, Ron? I'm ready. Well, it's all yours. Okay. Well, Wayne, Wayne Delier is our speaker tonight. He grew up in Arizona and developed his art and woodworking at, at, when he was young. Did some artwork, painting, oil paintings and things like that too. But he uh, is currently a full-time furniture maker and owns and operates what, uh, Wayne Delier Furniture Maker uh, operation now. Makes custom handmade furniture in Granbury, Texas. He's really a great marketry worker. I saw one of his pieces at the Texas Furniture Show a couple of weeks when I was back visiting my sister. It was the one that we had on the one of our newsletters there with the um, pointing fingers in the Sistine Chapel. Uh, really a great piece of work. Wayne won the, the Best Texas Award for that. He's won all kinds of awards across the nation. Just, just won another one up in Wyoming this fall, too, for his marketry work. Uh, just terrific work. So, Wayne, I'll turn it over to you with that. Thanks, Ron. I appreciate all the nice words. <laughs> I want to say hello to everybody. I'm proud to be here, and I appreciate you asking me to get here. You, you may ask me to leave here in a minute. I don't know. But, uh, so what I'm going to show you is it's just the, the real basics. You know, I've only got like an hour. Is that right, Ron? An right. hour? Uh, so obviously in that time, I'm not going to be able to teach you all how to be great marketerians or anything like that. But I can show you the basics and, and the basic process of how I go about things. And really, that's the most important thing is the process. You, you learn the process and, and uh, you make fewer mistakes. You'll make lots of mistakes, but you'll make fewer of them eventually. So with marketry, you always start with a plan. Um, they call it, now I do what's called the packet method. So because this is a short amount of time, I picked something simple and that I was familiar with. So I picked uh, the state of Texas. To make it simple, I just picked the state. I got this off the internet. Uh, it's just a line drawing of Texas, okay? So that's gonna be my pattern today. And the method I use is called the packet method. That's where we make a packet with, uh, this is just plain old foam board. It comes in uh, 20 by, this is a 20 by 30 sheet. I just cut this up. You can get it at Walmart, the dollar store, Michaels, any of the craft stores sell this. This is a quarter inch kind. I used to use um, this cardstock was what we conventionally used before. And I didn't have any cardstock out here. I normally get it from Amazon. So I had this foam board for something else, something I was doing with my grandson and I tried it. And it's a hundred percent better than this cardstock. It, I really fell into something when I started using this and that's been fairly recent. So anyway, what we do is we, we build this packet. I've got a piece. I start with my uh, substrate. This is what I'm gonna glue it to. This is just quarter inch MDF, simple MDF. I sand it to 120 right before I glue it up on both sides. Anytime you do veneering, you need to veneer both sides of your substrate because even though it's a little 142nd piece of veneer, it absorbs and dries uh, moisture at a different speed than the MDF will and it'll, it'll warp no matter how thin it is, it'll, it'll eventually warp if you don't do something on both sides. Now you don't have to do a fancy veneer on both sides or a fancy marquetry on both sides unless you want to which I do a lot with, with a, if it's a box lid. But be sure you put some kind of veneer. Sometimes I buy poplar veneer just to uh, use as a backer. So I took two pieces of, I used my backer board and my scalpel. This is a Swan Morton scalpel right here. And uh, 
I like these because they're carbon steel instead of stainless or other steel so that they stay hard longer. You can change the blades and you can actually sharpen these blades. You just take a, a just pretend that this is a, a sharpening stone. You just take the tip of it and drag it along the back side of it along the sharpening stone and it'll sharpen that point again. And you can use these over and over and over again by sharpening, especially if you're cheap like I am. So then I took that foam board and I put my uh, substrate over it. And that's what I use to cut my foam board. That way I've got it the exact same size as my substrate. And then I use that, that same stub substrate. And I cut out a bunch of pieces of different veneers. These are mostly scraps from furniture that I've built over the years. Uh, I've got some walnut burl that was it, on that last piece I made for the Texas Furniture Maker Show. This is called Pecky Curly Maple. More of that burl, more Pecky Curly. And this is just a, a pretty piece of walnut, I thought, kind of liked it. Take throw it away. In fact, I don't throw anything away unless they're small pieces, I, I keep them forever. You never know when you're gonna make boxes or you're looking for that one piece of, of burl that has the grain looks like a bird's feather or whatever. You just you just never know what you're going to need. Can so Wayne? Yes, sir. Um, can we get the name of that scalpel again and the kind of scalpel? Oh, absolutely. It it says uh, Swan S W A N N Morton M O R T O N, and it's made in Sheffield, England. It's 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 carbon steel. It's it's really really, and they're not expensive either. This is a number three, and I get them on Amazon. Yeah, they even have scale back here in metrics up to uh, 50 millimeters on the back side of it. So pretty handy. <clears throat> Let's talk about tools. This is also a Swan Morton. And I, I like this one. It's, it's the same. Uh, carbon steel on the blade, but it's removable. And it's a lot easier to remove than that other one, that conventional cadaver scalp was what it is. And it, it also retracts, so that makes it nice. You know, I can stick it in my uh, work apron without stabbing myself, <laughs> which don't ask me how I know that. And then my third, and I like this too, it, this is also a Swan Morton. You can tell I, I looked on Amazon and bought all of these, but uh, this one has a replaceable blade with a screw in it. And you can keep extra blades inside of it. So when I'm teaching classes, I kind of like using this because I have, uh, you know, new blades right there for the taking. And I made myself a little piece of, uh, little something to hold them in. It's just a piece of foam board. You know, this one inch thick foam board. Got a piece of it here somewhere. Anyway, and uh, scrap walnut, and just glued it together. Sometimes this, I've done them before with little dovetails and all that stuff. And then somebody comes in and says they like it and they end up going home with it. Um, other tools you'll need is the straight edge. Because you know, by the way, if you ever get a chance, take Paul Shirt's um, marketry class. He is, as far as I'm concerned, he's the best. He's who I learned from, and uh, I'd take a class from him again today. It's just really a good guy, great teacher. And nice sharp scalpel. Let's see. Okay, nice sharp scalpel is a great tool. Scalpel works good across the grain. With the grain, you normally want to use your uh, your uh, veneer saw. 
Another tool I use, especially for repairs, the tiniest repairs are done with one of the biggest uh, chisels. It's a 40 millimeter, two cherries uh, chisel. The, the, the steel is just the right hardness that it stays sharp when you're cutting veneer. It's just the right size. It's, it's got a lot of weight to it. I like that and I'm able to get in and make little, little repairs, little cuts and all that, straighten things out with this better than any tool I have. So I like my two cherries. So, and, and the foam board I cut just like I do uh, anything else with the scalpel, I just put the substrate over it, cut it out. It's really easy to work with. One thing I really like about the foam board, and you'll see we use uh, tape a lot. Uh, this foam board has a, a paper backing on it and tape sticks to it like you can't believe. It really, really is a great, it's crazy to go on and on and on about the foam board, but it's new to me and it sure is working good. So I'm pretty excited. So we got the state of Texas. All I did was take some, uh, put it, printed it out, take some uh, Loctite spray adhesive. It doesn't matter what kind, the cheaper is just as good as the expensive stuff. Whatever's cheapest is what I get. Uh, you spray the backside of your cartoon in marketry, we call your, your, your plan, your design, a cartoon. You spray the backside of the cartoon and the front side of your substrate or of your backer, which is this foam board, spray that, spray the cartoon, put them, glue one to the other, and you got it made. So th now we're going to build a packet. I've got uh, six pieces of veneer, I believe. Two, four, six. One of the greatest beauties of doing the packet method is you can make multiples of anything you want just by adding extra veneers. You can go up to 16 sheets of veneer without it starting to uh, flex the blade and, and you start having problems. And if the blade flexes, nothing goes together right, you'll have gaps and that sort of thing. But 16 pieces of uh, 42nd of an inch veneer you can do. So that would be eight of these, I've got uh, six, so we'll do three of them, two. Yeah, I'll, I'll do three piece Texas designs, say we're gonna use it for box tops or something. In Texas, you can sell these all day long <laughs> if you want. <laughs> People are pretty proud about Texas. Though. If it was Arizona, you'd starve to death. So I'm going to build a hinge, first of all, with some tape. So I've got that attached to Texas. And we'll Not rocket science, I've just made a hinge. Now, if I had some small details, this is a two veneer marquetry. I mean, it's, it's about as simple as you can get, but like I said, we, we've got uh, so little time. Let's add another piece to this. We'll add a heart. We'll, we'll put the heart of Texas in there. So we'll make it just that much tougher. So I've got my six veneers in there. I've got uh, this edge taped. Now, normally, if I had a lot of shifting pieces and, and you know a really detailed 
uh, motif here, all of these veneers would be taped down. But with this method here and, and so few veneers, I'm gonna be able to just uh, do it all in one packet and just tape around the edges and we'll be fine. I softened this veneer yesterday with veneer softener. This is the veneer softener I use. It's called Pro Glue Veneer Softener. You can get on the internet or on YouTube and they tell you how to make all these different things. Scott, Scott Grove, who is a wonderful, wonderful craftsman and artist, he tells you how to make it. And I sat there and I wrote it all down and then I made it. And I, I had the biggest mess I've ever had in my life using that because he puts uh, glue in it. And this has got a dab of glue, but not much. And his formula didn't work for me. So I, I from now on, after, after that mess and ruining a whole bunch of real nice burl, I, uh, I buy it. It's not that expensive. Just go ahead and buy it. So you tape all around. One, one of the enemies of marquetry is, is having your veneer shift. Um, if the veneer shifts, it won't line up pieces will start falling out the bottom of your scroll saw. First, we gotta have something to make, which, which was my drawing, that's what we're making. Second, we gotta figure out how big we're gonna make it. And then we make our substrate out of MDF, you can use quarter inch plywood, three quarter inch plywood, whatever you want. Use the Baltic birch though. Don't use that cheap stuff you get at Home Depot because that won't work. Even the expensive stuff at Home Depot won't work. So get it from a good lumber dealer. I've also used that um, maple plywood and it, it was real nice too. It, it was very good. more plies it has, the better, better the plywood. Okay, so there's our packet, pure and simple, just taped around the edges. Um, I use a lot of different kinds of tape for this because it's the quick and easy and, and, and short, short, so short a time, I just use packing tape. When you use packing tape, believe it or not, the cheaper, the better. It'll, it'll, it doesn't stick as good as the expensive stuff. And, and when it touches your veneers and things like that, you wanna be able to get it off. The cheap stuff rolls up easy with a heat gun too. You can, you can get it off later with a heat gun. Uh, tape. This is uh, Scotch 2090. This is the original blue tape. I call this the thick blue tape. This is, I use that for, taping down veneers. If I was gonna put red in the middle there, I should have got a piece of red, but if I was gonna use red in the middle, I would tape a piece of veneer, maybe four inches by four inches so that that heart was there. I know I'm gonna have uh, multiples, so I'd put three or four pieces, however many I needed for that heart, but we can do it a little different. I'll show you here in a little while, a few minutes after we cut this. So uh, for taping things down, as, as good as I can possibly get them, I'll use this uh, original blue tape. For taping things temporarily while I put my packet back together, uh, I'll use this, uh, it's called 60 day tape, but it's uh, Scotch 2080, Scotch number 2080. It used to be blue too. And for some reason, all I can get is this, this stuff now but it's the same exact tape, it's just different color. I don't know why they made it a different color. This is, this is, this is the old uh, 2080. It's just, it's very thin. I call that thin blue tape. Then, then when you really get into marquetry and, and you start doing very detailed things like feathers and, and things like that, 
like if you're doing this one here, you know, you got little tiny legs and all these little things going on here. You'd use gum tape for that. And it's like a hide glue on paper. In fact, I'll show you the dispenser. Wayne, could you um, tilt that picture up just a little bit? We're getting a little bit of glare on it. Which, which one? The, the one right there you're with your hands on. If you could tilt that up about 45 sure. degrees. Can you see oh, that okay? There we yeah. Go. Okay. Yeah, this is a, let's see, this is a state bird of Arizona, my, my home state. This is called a uh, cactus wren. Anyway, this is the gum tape. This one in particular has actually got fish glue on it. And you don't notice it till it gets wet and then it start, or you touch your finger to your tongue after you've used it. But this really, really works good to hold those small pieces together while you cut them. Uh, you'll have a whole lot less problem. And if it does split, which, you know, veneers split very easily. If it does split, it holds it intact. So as long as you don't lose a piece of it, you can put it in the marquetry and it'll come out just fine. I use the wide one and then this is a, a, a smaller one. So. When you get further up the road, if you decide to take up marketry, you're going to definitely need one of these and some of that tape to go with it. So when you put your tape down, uh, you put your tape down, you know, you put it over your veneers. I'll put it on here. I'll say this is my cardboard veneer here. You put it down. I use my I use my veneer saw for cutting this nice and good, nice and smooth. Anyway, say I put that down over my veneer so the pieces don't fall apart. It holds it together real well, so it all comes out in a single piece as I use the pieces. You don't just put that down on the veneer. You take this. Uh, brass brush. This is an Osborne 54036. You can find them. It's a real soft bristle brass brush. And they're not that expensive. I think they were like $9 for this brush, something like that. And I've had it forever. They just last and last, but I only use it for putting the tape down. After you put it on that veneer, push that stuff in. And I've had a lot of students, you know, they're boring it. They put it down like this. No, that's not how you do it. You get in there and put that stuff down in there so it gets down in there and, and uh, doesn't split apart on you. So anyway, that's a tip. Uh, okay, V-tongs. I use these little V-tongs. You get them from Paul Shirts at Shirts. Shirts. What is it? Veneerartist.com. And you can pick up little tiny pieces while you're working with these. You'll have little tiny pieces you're trying to put together. You can just snap it right up. I've never seen a tool that's better for veneering and marquetry than, than these. They're better than your fingers, more accurate. They're also extremely sharp. So you got to be careful. They're, they're like razor blades on the edge, which is great when you're cutting the tape off. We'll do that here in a few minutes after we get done cutting this thing. Okay, so we've got our cartoon. We're ready to, ready to go with that. Cartoon is what they call this. It has nothing to do with Bugs Bunny, by the way. Um, our packet's ready. We're ready to go make uh, a whole bunch of Texas in one cut. By the way, when you do multiple pieces and stuff, like, the bird I just showed you, you know, it's got, I don't know, it's got 35, 35 pieces on it, which isn't that much. But you want to, as you're taking these tiny little pieces, as you cut them out of the scroll saw, you want to place them, you know, everything's numbered on there. You want to place them exactly where they go, what number is the coinciding number on here so that when you go to put them together, you can, you can still do it. Also, don't turn the fan or the air conditioner on <laughs> uh, 
or open the doors to your shop because it's a nice day because I've had them all over this shop, everywhere. I, I still find pieces every once in a while when I get down and clean under the table saw and that, that I was wondering what happened to them. And they float. They don't just fall. They float away because they're so light. Anyway, um, in my class, everybody will have one of these and it works out pretty good. I've, got, I've had these that were six feet long and two feet wide, all numbered up because of how many pieces were on it. I do a lot of tabletops and things like that in marquetry. And uh, it gets real interesting when things start falling off the table. 